everyone. Thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Israeli police have now identified Supreme Court Judge David Mintz as the target of an attempted attack outside the Dolev settlement in the West Bank this morning. Officers received a call from Mintz reporting that he was driving his car on Road 463 on his way to work when a Palestinian vehicle stopped and blocked him in. Three people then exited the vehicle and approached his with hammers, at which point Mintz reportedly fled for his life. Police have opened an investigation, but suspected motive for the attack has not yet been released. In other news, a Palestinian man was shot dead this morning by Israeli security forces outside the Gitai Junction in the northern West Bank as he attempted to stab a soldier stationed there. No Israelis were injured. Following yet another weekend of continued Palestinian violence along the Gaza border, the Israeli security cabinet issued harsh warnings on Sunday to the Hamas terror organization governing the Strip. Prime Minister Netanyahu then reiterated that if Hamas were to ignore this warning, it would have dire consequences. Defense Minister Lieberman similarly cautioned that Israel has exhausted all existing options in dealing with Hamas over the last months, including once again halting scheduled fuel shipments to the Strip last weekend in response to the violence. Hamas has been organizing thousands along the Israel-Gaza security barrier on a regular basis as part of the March of Return protests that began last March. Palestinian rioters along the border burn tires, set off explosives, throw grenades and stones and Molotov cocktails, and otherwise destroy or infiltrate the security barrier with the intent to attack Israelis. Incendiary kites and balloons have been especially costly, as thousands of acres of farmland and nature reserves in southern Israel have been lost. Just yesterday, Palestinians sparked at least four fires near the border with these devices. In one case, Israeli aircraft were able to return fire on a group of Palestinians launching an incendiary balloon from near Beit Hanun in northern Gaza. One Gaza man was reportedly injured in the strike. But Hamas is now threatening to make things much worse by instigating larger clashes in the coming days with Israeli and Egyptian border forces should Hamas and the PA institute new sanctions against Gaza. Hamas essentially said that any casualties sustained in this case would be on the PA's hands. Abbas has long been trying to gain control over the Strip through crippling sanctions, now threatening to withhold even more funding if Hamas receives aid from and holds ceasefire negotiations with other nations without the PA's permission and involvement. In fact, just last week, the PA said it had even lost faith in United Nations Middle East Peace Envoy Nikolai Mladenov, saying he was stepping outside his role for trying to broker such ceasefire talks. PLO Executive Committee member Ahmad Majdalani told the United Nations that Mladenov was no longer acceptable to the Palestinian government as his actions harmed the Palestinian national security and unity of the Palestinian people. In light of the complex situation then, the Israeli security cabinet has now decided to take a wait-and-see approach to war in Gaza for at least the next week, pending how Hamas decides to continue. The IDF has ordered the demolition of the family home of Ashraf Na'alawa, the Balkan Industrial Zone terrorist who murdered Kim Levengron Yechezkel and Ziv Hajbi in a shooting attack last week. The IDF delivered the decision to Na'alawa's parents this morning, and security forces are now preparing to decimate his house. The Na'alawa family has three days to appeal the demolition order. The last home demolition Israel conducted was of the home of Khalil Jabarin, the Palestinian terrorist who stabbed to death American-Israeli Ari Fold. Israel says the practice of demolishing terrorists' homes is considered an effective means of discouraging future attacks, though it has been criticized by human rights groups as a form of collective punishment. Meanwhile, the manhunt for Na'alawa continues into its eighth day and involves multiple security forces. The Border Police's Counterterrorism Special Unit Yamam, the Elite of Divan Unit, the Lotar Counterterrorism Unit, and the IDF Oketz Unit, as well as Shinbait Forces, Central Command, and West Bank Brigade soldiers are all participating in the manhunt. Na'alawa is believed to be armed and preparing to engage soldiers when finally found, as security officials obtained an alleged suicide note prior to last week's attack. The IDF and Shin Beit have also arrested and interrogated several other Palestinian suspects that they believe aided Na'alawa in either his attack or escape. Arrests included Na'alawa's sister and brother, but charges against them have not yet been made public. Na'alawa arrived to his workplace in the Balkan Industrial Zone last Sunday morning and entered the offices of the Alone Group factory armed with an illegal submachine gun. He then shot dead his two victims and injured another before making his escape. After being downed last week for maintenance, the Israeli Air Force has now returned its fleet of F-35 stealth fighters to full service. The entire Israeli fleet of American-made fighters was taken out of commission last Thursday after a United States Marine Corps F-35B crashed in South Carolina last month. 
The reported cause of the crash was a defective fuel line, and so even though Israel doesn't even have that same model of F-35, the planes were taken in for thorough checks to the engine and fuel lines to prevent the same issues. The British and American forces made similar actions after the plane came down, a first for the advanced aircraft. But the return to full service couldn't have come at a better time too, as the Air Force gears up this morning at the Stedov military base in Tel Aviv for a massive Air Force drill. The public can expect to hear and see explosions, smoke, sirens, and increased traffic in light of the exercise, which the IDF says was planned in advance as part of a larger combat readiness program for the year. Meanwhile, Israeli drones were reported to have struck a surveillance device in southern Lebanon overnight near the southern town of Zrarieh. Lebanese officials have opened an investigation, but the IDF has not responded as per policy. The origin of the spy device is not yet clear. If true, however, the incident would just go to show that F-35s are not, the Israeli Air Force is still prepared to protect the nation from the skies. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.